We're here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're now visiting with Brad Ward, who's the 2017 Teacher of the Year Thank for you. the San Juan Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, so you're at Mesa Verde High School. Yes. And you teach freshman English, honors English, and you're the AVID teacher. Um, yeah, I'm the freshman AVID teacher. I'll move up to sophomore AVID this year. Okay. Before we get into AVID, I want to talk about um, what you're teaching now in Honors English. Um, are students uh, reading the classics and a combination of modern, or what do you focus on? Uh, again, classics. We work on Romeo and Juliet. We work on The Odyssey. We work on uh, Hunger Games. We did a little Divergent. Um, lots of short stories that they have to dissect the characters and, and have to break down the settings and the plots. And so you try to do a mixture of classic plus fairly modern to, to kind of for variety and to keep them interested? You have to. Um, again, interest is the whole thing. When you're teaching freshmen, you've got to be part Walt Disney uh, as well as being a freshman English teacher. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to hold them, uh, especially in Mesa Verde where you have to hold their interest for 90 minutes. So when you're teaching the classics like a Romeo and Juliet or the Odyssey, um, it, it can be complex reading and, and following the characters. Do you, do you find yourself spending a lot of time really dissecting the literature? You have to. I mean, it, there, there's a pretty large difference between 15th century uh, Shakespearean English and, and 21st century English that we have now. So we were lucky enough or have been lucky enough to not only use the book that obviously comes, the textbook that comes with things. Um, we picked up a, a book called No Fear Shakespeare, which breaks down uh, what Shakespeare wrote and then what it means in modern English so we can break it down. It's a little time consuming, but it works real well. Do you find the kids getting excited about classics? They do. Once I, once I put a sword in their hand and have mapped out the scene, they love that. <laughs> a little risky, but at least a, it's a good technique, right? <laughs> yeah. No blood yet. No blood. So now let's talk about AVID. A and uh, for people who don't know what AVID is, explain what it is first of all. Um, advancement via indiv individual determination. It's a program where you have students who want to go to school. And at Mesa Verde, we're a little lower socioeconomics uh, in, in structure. So we work with them very, very diligently to get them ready for college and to get them accepted into college. We've had a great success rate at Mesa Verde uh, in which, uh, for instance, this year, out of 38 students, 38 senior AVID students, 36 of them got accepted to a four-year university. So we'll keep that up and, and hopefully get, keep the acceptance rate really high. So we're pretty proud of that. Well, the evidence is pretty clear that the college going rate for AVID students is extremely high. Yeah, out of, out of, at Mesa Verde, we had 43 students get accepted to uh, four-year universities, while well, 36 of them were from the AVID program. So it, it kind of speaks for itself. It definitely does. And so how do you apply that um, AVID philosophy when you're teaching like an English class, honors? Well, you have Cornell notes that you, mm -hmm. that you take. Um, you have time management that you have and to And Cornell do. notes, for people who don't know, is a special style of note-taking. Yeah, you have a left-hand column for questions. You have uh, things that you have in the center. You have to give a summary at the end. What did you learn today? And a, an essential question at the top that we, this is what we want to learn today. So it allows them, and really Cornell notes are great study guides. So when we get to the summit of assessment, I can go through and say, okay, you know, you need to you know, look at your Cornell notes, make sure you know this. I, I might give them a few more hints than that, but the Cornell notes are 99% of what they need to know for that summative assessment. So uh, ninth, 10th grade is, is, is an age where students are figuring out who they are or trying to and they don't know. And uh, is that difficult for you in the classroom because you're, you're teaching complex subjects like you know, something on the honors level and at the same time you're you're dealing with some students who are trying to figure out who they are as people. Yeah, it, it makes it interesting in that um, they may change from day to day or minute to minute depending on the psyche, you know, that things that are going on and my boyfriend's mad at me, my girlfriend just broke up with me. Um, 14, 15, 16 is a tough age and it's, mm -hmm. it, it's, a, it's a hard age to focus on to maybe the grander scale of where you're going to go, but you still have to remain focused in what you're doing and how to get there. And so I do spend some time uh, playing lion tamer, 
so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, now you, you've got to calm down here just a little bit. Everything's okay. Let's fo get back to focus on, on what is it at hand. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's like having a different class altogether almost as far as teaching students uh, kind of the social aspect of it because... It has its moment yeah. it, it, and it's, it gets a little more difficult um, I think now with social media, with, with technology, and students, I think, have a hard time now breaking down what is said on Snapchat or Instagram or Facebook and, and setting it aside. They let it boil up. They're letting it boil up. One of the things that, that I think I've noticed more at uh, Mesa Verde over the last couple of years is the tension among students. Uh, because he, sh he said, she said, as opposed to, okay, I got to get over this. And, and again, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't sometimes resonate uh, real well with them. Yeah, because, because uh, social media is so immediate. Yeah. Students, uh, well, not just young people, but people in general who use social media have a tendency to, to uh, text before they think and then respond without thinking. Oh, and I so, think that happens with a lot, absolutely. Yeah, so you see that a lot, so especially with, with a, an emotional teenager, let's say, um, you know, they, they'll just post a response or get really upset with something they see. Exactly, hardest thing to do is say, I'm gonna sit on this for a day and, and see how I feel maybe tomorrow night. That doesn't really happen because, again, uh, their angst, uh, gets the better of them. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it, it's, it's a tough thing to do. I don't know how you would regulate it. I don't know how you would say, look, don't bring your phones to school. Um, I don't think that's ever going to happen. Yeah. So am I correct in that you're a second career person here? Yes, I had uh, uh, 27 years. My, my family started a business uh, in Sacramento. Um, I sold the business in 2005 and was retired. Um, Manicuring my lawn with scissors and everything was perfect. Making and, up your days. Yeah, hey, I'm making it, trying to make up because I, I didn't have a whole lot of hobbies when you run a business that, that consumes you. And then my wife said to either um, get a job or get a job. So <laughs> I said, I, I coached the soccer team over at San Juan High School uh, starting in 1997. So I, I was coaching over there and I loved interacting with the students. And I said, fine, okay, look, I'll go back to, to school, get my teaching credential, get my master's. Uh, at the age of 51 and uh, become a teacher mm -hmm. and, I, and I, no regrets. No regrets at all. Oh, no. It's a, making that kind of a change is, is big because it, it's not like you had it always been your desire to be a teacher or, or was maybe in the back of your mind you had always thought about teaching. In the back of my mind I always wanted to be a teacher. I, I think one of the things that everybody strives for is making a difference and when you own a business you make a difference so to speak in in the community and when I was done um, I, w I felt hollow inside this mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense but I wasn't making a difference I, I was in a, a guy sitting in his backyard wondering what to do next and so to make a difference with, with the kids that I teach and, and and the people around me that's why I wanted to become a teacher go, go back and make a difference is there a teacher in your life from years ago or even maybe recently when you went back to get your master's that really kind of you think about in modeling yourself? I have a couple. Um, Brett Touge was my teaching partner at Mesa Verde. He, I actually knew him when I first started teaching. He, he disavows that, but I, I did. <laughs> um, and, but he, to, to use him as a sounding board, he's now the vice principal over at Mesa Verde, so I used him a lot. And we had a teacher who just retired, Donna Marshall, uh, what a uh, she taught for 43 years and, and probably forgot more than I'll ever know. Uh, uh, outstanding AP honors, so she did it all, and, and she kind of helped push me along and, and get me more motivated into to where I'm at now. What's it mean for you to be a teacher of the year? Sometimes it doesn't sink in. I I I I, I I'm honored. Uh, um, it is great to be in a group of people because obviously somewhere every one of these people who are nominated for Teachers of the Year made a difference in somebody's life and that's, you know, somebody said, hey, you made a difference, we nominated you, we, we really loved what you did. And so to be included in that group, I'm terribly honored. 
Well, I think the people in the San Juan Unified District are happy that you came out of retirement. <laughs> we appreciate speaking with you. We've been speaking with uh, Brad Ward from the San Juan Unified School District. Thanks appreciate for joining it. us. Thanks. Thank you for having sure. me.